Welcome back everyone, Zaf here, and I want to show you something very amazing. We have the Battlefield time here, and we're able to claim our latest awards. This is a big deal. Let me show you why that is. I'm going to claim them right here, and you see we got these points right here, that being the season points. Super, super important, and I'll show you exactly why that is. And I know the real importance here is actually this right here. Traces of Shadow being one of the rare resources we have, so clearly getting 50 is obviously something very important. But what I'm focused on is these points here, and I guess these ones as well. We have the Medal of Time, a thousand is quite a lot. And remember, if you do have these, make sure to use them ASAP. We only have four-ish days left until they do expire, so go to the shop and use them. I will talk about the shop in just a moment. And also, real quick congrats to Lena for getting the first commenter in our last video. I have no idea how she does it over and over again. This is like her 20th first comment. So a huge shout out to you. You are one of the fastest commenters we have. But what is important here, and why I try to get the rank one time every single time, well, technically speaking, I only just started to try on these events. As you can see, if we go to, let's say, this event here, I did try to get rank one here as well, but for these first two, I kind of just forgot about them. I did it last second, and I didn't really care. That's why I got rank four, for example. I really should have focused on these earlier. So that's why I did hustle to get rank one and rank one right here, because rank four would not have carried me to allow me to get the season one title here. Though I don't think I'll be number one, there might be one person that is ahead of me, but that does not matter. But I do digress. The reason why this is so important to get, at least in the top three spots, is due to this very magical reward right here. So once the season does end, you can get the rank awards, and they do provide this very, very beautiful crown. The crown of honor. Now, what does this mean? This crown is given when you appear in the Battlefield of Time season rankings. So that means for this event, once you accumulate enough points, we have 1825, and if that's enough to get in the top three, you'll get a crown. But where does this crown go? Can you redeem it for any rewards? I'll show you exactly where that juicy crown does go. If I can just go back to our menus, there's so many to choose from here. Let me press this button here. So let's click our profile. It should be this area right over here, clicking it. And I tabbed out my accent, there we go clicking it yet again, and as it loads in, you can see your crowns will go right over here. They're basically just a display. There really isn't anything else to it. It'll just be on your profile. You'll have a pretty crown, and it's basically like a, um, let's say, swag factor to your profile page. Obviously not that crazy, but it's still like a completionist activity, trying to get the crowns for every season. I just started doing it for this season, season 1, and hopefully every other season coming up for as long as I play. It really won't benefit you though getting those crowns, but at least it will motivate you to get more rewards for the events, because Battlefield Time does provide some very decent rewards as you saw. Those traces of shadow were no joke, providing us a solid, solid amount. 50 is honestly more than I expected, maybe something like 10, 25, that would be nice. But 50, the devs clearly do want to award that people will get to the top 3 spots. So that's why I do make guides for the Battlefield Time, so everyone can follow them. That way they don't feel lost, they know exactly what to do to optimize their builds, use the proper hunters, because it's a very confusing system. There's a lot of optimal weapons you can use, a lot of hunters, so picking the right one can be hard, including skills. Using the right skills is all part of strategy. Doing it correctly is not easy, even for me it takes me dozens of tries to get the proper time even if I have the right loadout. And wow, looks like we got three traces of shadow, that's very nice. Usually we never get them, so I will gladly take that. And Gates, can I just tell you how easy they've become? No longer do I have to wait hours and hours, rescanning over and over again, waiting for five minutes, not getting the gates I want. It was a struggle and I despised it. Something else they do need to do 
if they want to keep improving the quality of life of this game, is to just make us use instance dungeons and all core missions all in one go. I really don't see the merit in letting us only do it two or eight times, whatever the pay to win and free to play mounts are. If I can do it once and you let me sweep it four times, secondly per run, just let me do it all in one go. I know the missions only take about a minute to do, but it's still such a waste of time. I despise games that make you do all these chores for little to no benefit when it can just be consolidated through one button click. Yes, if you've never done it in the past, you should be forced to complete it obviously, but once you've done it hundreds of times, just give us the option to sweep it. Wasting a player's time is not cool at all. Please stop doing it. That includes this dungeon here. Let me just pop it open. The Battlefield Chaos. I don't see why we need to do it every single time for each of the three runs. Just let us sweep it. And that sweep effect should apply once we have completed it once. It's not like the difficulty does increase. All it does is waste our time, which you should avoid in games like this. Our time is precious. It lets us get more money to spend on the game, so please devs, do not waste it anymore. But yeah, I know for a fact the devs are going to implement that change very soon. I am looking forward to that. At least I hope they do. If they don't, I'm going to be a very, very sad camper. But again, we'll just have to see. I know the devs are smart. They don't want to implement features that waste our time, negatively impacting our gameplay experience. So that change will come, mark my words. And I'm very excited for guilds to come out. I know everyone is. They should come out, I think, maybe towards the end of this month, or at least approaching July. Don't quote me, but that's based on the schedule the devs release themselves. So we'll just have to wait and see, but it is very promising. I can't wait to make a guild. Having guild content will probably be so fun. So if you do want to participate in our guild in the future, make sure to join our Discord server. I can't guarantee every single person will be able to join the guild I make, just based on how the devs do create it. Maybe it'll be based on the server you're in. Maybe it's not based on activity, but based on how much damage you can do, how many boss fights you can complete, etc. But again, we'll have to see. Just join our Discord server, and once we get it sorted, we'll have guild recruitments in there, making it easy for anyone to find a guild. I am hoping they're not going to be server-based, though. If they're server-based, we are completely cooked, since I don't even think there's that many people per server, especially in the early access servers, I know a lot of people did quit, or just rerolled their accounts. So please devs, if you're listening, make the guilds global, to not under any circumstances, make them lock to a server. I guess they could lock it to server groupings, like 1 to 100, 101 to 200, 201 to 300, whatever it is. Though still I would prefer global guilds, just because if you have a friend in a server that's hundreds of servers away from you, you can still have them join your guild, which would be ideal. So please devs, if you are listening, do consider that. Make guilds a global feature where anyone can join any guild, do not restrict it, and also please at least have guilds have a capacity of let's say 50 people. I know that might be a lot, but it would be much nicer for these communities. So Leveling Arise does have fantastic communities around it. So we do want a lot of people per guild, even 100, I'll be more than happy to accommodate for that. So if the devs are listening, please don't make the guild cap like 15, 20, 30, like some other games do. Make the capacity for each guild very large, that way we can have a lot of people in there, and it will be even more fun for everyone involved. And before I do forget for the exchange shop, what you want to use your resources on is the rate of draw tickets and the hunter exclusive weapon design. You should go for the weapon design first, that's my opinion. The summons can wait. These are much more rare. You do want to craft SR weapons for your hunters and getting these designs takes so so long to do. So focus on these first, then go for the rate of draw tickets and then the custom draw tickets. But if for some reason you're super desperate, you can substitute let's say the custom draw tickets for the Traces of Shadow, that's not a bad value, so go for those as well. Totally up to you. It does provide us a lot here. I can get 50 by using a thousand points, so not too bad. It's totally your choice, but again, those are just my general recommendations. You should not go for gold ever. Gold is so easy to get, 
Same with the crystal chests here, though if you might need one or two, you probably could, but there's better options here to get these chests. So try not to waste your points. And since I did mention those crystals, you can use your traces of dimensions in your weapon materials exchange. They only cost 900 each, pretty good value. But as you play, you will get a ton for free, quote unquote free. So don't worry too much about these. But yeah, that was it for today's video. I just wanted to go over us getting our crown for the first time. Even though we have to wait a few days, we'll get it very shortly. So if you want more Soul Leveling Rise content like this, be sure to subscribe, drop a like on this video, and comment down below if you have any questions or concerns. This was Zaf, signing out.